So it's probably not immediately obvious what Russell has in mind with this chapter. To kind of catch up, remember what, he, what he's already done, is he's uh, already talked about a priori justification of these general principles. And, um, you, you know, he, he tried to explain how we come to know the components, the parts of these general principles, that's the universals. And we're acquainted with the universals. Now, acquaintance with the universals doesn't get us whether a, a, a judgment using the universals is true or false. Right? It just, it just kind of gets the ball rolling. So in this chapter, he's trying to elaborate on this notion of self-evident. Right? Now, remember, when we were looking back at the principle of induction and the principle of inference, well, one of the things that made specifically the principle of inference self-evident is that you have to use the principle of inference. If you try to... Uh, prove the principle of inference, you're going to have to use the principle of inference. If you try to disprove the principle of inference, you still have to use the principle of inference. So this principle of inference must be used. It's indispensable. And this is what he says initially in this chapter, is that these principles are self-evident in the sense that, that um, they uh, are used in demonstrations, in logical demonstrations or arguments. You have to use them. They're indispensable in these logical in these demonstrations, but they themselves cannot be demonstrated. We can't prove the principle of induction by using the principle of induction. We can't prove the principle of inference by using the principle of inference. And you know, similarly, we can't use the principle of inference in order to prove the principle of induction. It doesn't work that way, or, or induction to prove inference. It, it, it doesn't work. So initially, this is what he, has, he says, is that these uh, principles Right? They're, they're self-evident in the sense that they are not the products of demonstration, but they are used in demonstration. Okay. Now, the principle of inference and the principle of induction are, are, are two general principles. But there are plenty of principles that we use that are not the product of demonstration. And the question is, you, you say, well, yeah, they're self-evident, but some of them are maybe, I don't know, are they as obvious as the rest? Are, are they justified as the rest? Just because we start with a principle, does that mean it's justified? So a lot of what he's doing in this section is he's exploring different examples of uh, these, these general principles are self-evident in the sense that they are not capable of demonstration, but they're used in demonstrations. They're self-evident that way. But self-evidence, this certainty about these self-evident principles, comes in degrees. To get the ball rolling, uh, we're going to start looking at what has the most certainty. And the most, you know, probably the most certainty that you have right now is that you are exper having experiences. So these are these, you know, so-called truths of perceptions. Now, to be, to be clear, the truth is not so much that, uh, you know, you're absolutely certain that I'm wearing a red shirt. No, that, that, that's not it. But, the, you know, this truth of, of perception would be, or this judgment of perception, right, is that there is existing some kind of perception, right? There's the existence of the perception, and that, that is redness, right? And, and that uh, you could put together the shape and, and everything else, and you put together, you know, we went through this exercise where we have the, you know, the various kinds of universals that we apply to this thing here, and, you know, you have this truth of the perception that you are experiencing red shirtness, right? We call it that, you know, kind of hand wave as to what, <laughs> what kind of universal that is. So this is the, this judgment of perception, that you are right now, in fact, having these experiences. Right? That that would be something, that, that would be an intuitive judgment, right? intuitive knowledge, uh, uh, right off the bat, and it's a judgment of perception, and has the most, if not you know, absolutely guaranteed certainty. Now, what, what he's dealing with here is, is, again, you can't infer, you can't demonstrate that you're having this perception. You're just simply having it. And the, this perception would, in fact, be used in some kind of demonstration, some kind of knowledge. In fact, you know, the knowledge that, you know, I am wearing a red shirt, right? That would, you know, your perceptions would be used in that demonstration. But it itself is not the product of demonstration. All right, so these judgments of perception, these are, these are held with certainty, this guarantee of truth. Also, uh, some logical principles, 
So what Russell has in mind here are uh, probably you know the principle of inference. Once again, the principle of inference that's held with certainty. You, there's just no way to doubt that. And uh, you know maybe some basics in mathematics, some basics in logic. Probably the three laws of thought. Uh, whatever you know, the law of identity, the law of contradiction, the law of the excluded middle. These would be uh, known with certainty. Their self-evidence is, is, is held to that degree, not only, you know, you know, so they're self-evident in the sense that you have to use them in a demonstration, but they're not the product of demonstration. And they have the highest degree, if not the absolute guarantee, of certainty. Pop quiz. Do you remember what I just had on my head? Of course you do. That's an immediate memory, right? You just finished seeing me with a hat on my head. This is an immediate memory. And uh, that's held with the, the, just a little bit less certainty than perceptions and logical principles. After all, you know, there could be some doubt, you could be hallucinating, or whatever, right? We can think of our favorite skeptical hypothesis to creep in just a little bit of doubt into uh, your immediate memory of what I, was wearing on my, uh, what I was wearing on my head. You know, memory is the whole thing that gets Russell started on uh, degrees of certainty with intuitive judgments. Right? You make plenty of intuitive judge. You have plenty of intuitive knowledge based upon memory. Lots, in fact. But memory is one of those things that's <laughs> notoriously subject to error. So you know we creep down just a little bit further down the line for uh, uh, intuitive knowledge that's held with just a little bit less certainty from true uh, judgments of perception and these logical principles. So next down the line, moving down our <laughs> degree of certainty, we've had these judgments of perception, logical principles right below that's going to be immediate memory. And then below that uh, is your judgments about induction, right? your inductive principles. Um, so you know, this is going to be your you know, degree, degree of, uh, of knowledge that, uh, that the principle of induction is going to hold. Now remember, um, you know, induction is great, uh, but there is some degree of... of uh, uh, error with, induc with, with induction. So we're, we're moving down the line. I mean, induction is still really high, right? It's just below uh, immediate memory, but uh, 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 or maybe right even with even memory. It's right about there. But there's still a little room for doubt for uh, for induction. It's still self-evident. You have to use it, and it can't be the product of demonstration. But there is a little room. Uh, for error. So what's below induction? Well, uh, more memories, right? And and probably uh, some derivations from uh, inference and uh, induction, right? From the principle of inference and principle of deduction, or induction. Excuse me. So um, you know, the further back the memory is supposed to. You know, the further back the event is that the, the memory is supposed to recall, uh, the less degree of certainty you have, the less degree of self, uh, the less degree of certainty you have. So, you know, the, for breakfast this morning, I had eggs. Uh, I made my own version of chilaquiles, right? And I had that. Uh, yesterday, I had uh, kind of an oatmeal crunch with some milk. Uh, the day before that, uh, you know, it's getting less clear now. I believe I had, a, I probably had that oatmeal crunch again, right? Uh, and I, I keep going back and, you know, remembering it with less less certainty. Now, in addition to uh, distance, you know, while Russell doesn't talk about this, I think it's worth mentioning maybe the detail, right? <laughs> so if the detail is like really particular, you're, you're probably not going to be able to remember very well. You know, the, the degree of certainty is going to be a lot less. So, for instance, what was the word uh, I used to begin the last scene? You know, how did... How did I begin the last scene? What word did I use? You know, that just happened. But you probably don't remember that first word. So memory, the further back it goes into the past, and, and, and I would probably include in there at least, uh, the degree of specificity of the detail, uh, the less certain you are. is still uh, intuitive knowledge, right? It's still intuitive knowledge in the sense that it's not demonstrated, but it's used in demonstration. But the certainty, it's eroding away. A little by little, but it's eroding away. So as we're going down our scale of certainty with our intuitive knowledge, 
uh, we also have to consider, you know, the, the complex, um, you know, complex calculations or, or complex derivations from these uh, basic principles that we have. So, you know, the law of identity, the law of contradiction, the law of excluded middle, these are all real, you know, obvious. You start out with them. But uh, when you start applying them and, and deriving more and more complicated, um, you know, theorems, then it's, you know, you start sliding down in certainty. So, uh, you know, everybody's going to say, well, it, it's, uh, of course, um, you know, the law of contradiction is true. And, of course, the law of excluded middle is true. What happens when you combine them? How well do you all do with combining them? So what this means is something like this, that uh, the proposition uh, it is false that P and Q is equivalent to either not P or not Q. Or uh, here's uh, the, the proposition it is false that either P or Q, well, that's, that's not, I mean, that's equivalent to not P and not Q. So, you know, I say that really fast, but, you know, it, it took somebody to sit down and figure that out and and there was a little short proof involved, but it was like, hey, you know, guess what? This is true. But we've ebbed away at a little bit of that certainty. Yeah, you, know, you might also see this with uh, complex mathematical uh, computation. So 2 plus 4 is easy. 4 plus 4 is 8 is easy. 8 plus 8 is 16 is easy. 16 plus 16 is 32. 32 and 32 is 64. 64, 64 is 128. 128 20 is 156. Uh, sorry, 256, see? <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, you know, our confidence starts eroding away the further along down these complications we go, even though it all starts with this really obvious intuitive knowledge, right? This, uh, this knowledge that we have a certainty. So these, these, uh, these calculations, what we derive from these basic principles, they're getting to be less and less certain. Well, it, kind of right around the same area, we have uh, ethical principles, right? So... Always do what's good is, you know, probably held. You say, yeah, I mean, usually that's right, but sometimes I have to do the wrong thing, right? So you might, you know, you're trying to reason this way about ethical propositions, and you know, Russell just kind of puts them, you know, immediately down low as, as far on this uh, the scale of certainty as to how certain we are with these self-evident because you kind of have to start with propositions like this self-evident principles, all right, but still held with a you know, less degree of certainty than something like the principle of inference. So what do we have with these self, uh, with these uh, self-evident principles? Well, we got two kinds of certainty. There's absolute guarantee of certainty, pretty much just our judgments of perception and abstract logical principles. And then um, it kind of goes downhill from there, right? Uh, recent memory, induction, Memories, fit, you know, the further you know, memories of things happening in the past, uh, you know, further along in the past, uh, you know, these complex, you know, complex uh, uh, kind of derivations of the truth, ethical principles. It goes down from there. Now, Russell's told us that we have these degree of certainty, and so you know, the question is, well, what's that supposed to mean, and how do you have something that's kind of, sort of certain, or has certainty only to a degree? Well, to answer that question, he says, well, we got to take a look at the nature of truth. And truth and error. And that's the topic of the next chapter.